was about 17 years old and I was in Guam. I was still in high school, second grade in high school, and that's when the reversion came. And I was concerned because back in 1968, that's when hot pants and stuff were, you know? <laughs> Women in Guam were all wearing hot pants. And I was thinking, Jesus Christ, I gotta go back to Japan and those girls are gonna be wearing kimonos. <laughs> but then, then the reversion happened and I went to Tokyo and man, I almost jumped out of my pants because all those girls were wearing hot pants, you know? Not that different, eh? No, not that different. <laughs> Our last video discussed the history of these islands, but it left out something really important in my eyes, and that's the history of the people of these islands. Because over the course of history, they've reverted between American and Japanese hands a number of times. And that must have been really strange if you were living here to wake up in a new country. And so we sat down with a local man with a very long history here in Ogasawara, and I'd like him to do more of the explaining than me in this video. But before we talk to him, I think there's four really important dates that you should know. The first comes in 1853. And in 1853, the United States makes this their colony. And that's an important date because it sets up the history of these islands that goes into 1862 when Japan takes it almost back or for the first time, depending on how you look at it, depending on whose eyes you're framing it from. In 1945, after World War II, America takes the islands again, turning it back into an American colony, which again is reverted to Japan in 1968. And with that in mind, it makes a lot more sense when talking to locals, especially those who have a deep history here, as to what those changes must have felt like or been for them and their families. Hello people, <laughs> my name is Rance O'Hara. I was born and raised on this island uh, September 13, 1950. And I grew up on this island. Uh, at the present, I'm an American citizen. I spent 23 years living in the States and it's been 23 years since I've been back to this island, so I'm pretty old. And could you take me just briefly through how your ancestors came to be here? It's a twisted story. It's, it's something that's kind of been hidden because some of the settlers to this island were not all angels. Some were deserters. Some were murderers. Who knows? You know, these were these islands were started off vicious. Do you know how long ago it might have been? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, eighteen in the eighteen forty, early eighteen forty. In the eighteen forties, and so that means that your mother and father would have been born here as mm -hmm. well. As these things happen, as Japan takes Chichijima, takes the Ogasawara chain. Things change here, of course, for the people who live here, especially when the war comes. When the war comes, how does that settlement change? How do those two colonists come Oh, no, that's a, that's, a, that's a two different stories there. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the original settlers, some of the, the first group of people that came from, the, from Hawaii, mm -hmm. the, the very first settlers, they were more of a uh, Western, origin yeah and there was a distinct difference between the Japanese and themselves okay so now there's one one guy who's re related to me he was used as a human shield I mean just strapped to a roof of a building because wow. he looked so Westerner and they figured that if they strap a, a, a Westerner looking guy yeah up on top of a build building, they won't drop their bombs. So to defend those areas, they, they, they hauled in a guy who was of Japanese citizenship, mm -hmm. but looked so Westerner that they figured, hey, you know, he'll <laughs> serve the purpose. You know, during the war, people's lives were like water, you know, crushing the bugs. Yeah. What happens after the war? 
after the war, the United States, this became under U.S. administration, right? Yeah. And they refused to have any civilians back here in the first place. Okay. But there was one, uh, one guy with relations to the original the settlers from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He contended with the U.S. administration and the administration agreed to return just the descendants of the original settlers. Just the descendants of the original settlers were allowed to return. Not, not the Japanese population yeah. until almost 49 years ago mm -hmm. when, when there was a reversal back to Japan. Then there was a, another influx of pure Japanese people. Now, so now the majority of the population is strictly Japanese. So they, they start to arrive. The, these new Japanese settlers, and now Chichijima's got a few thousand population, yeah, correct? Yeah, 2,000, about 2,500. About 2,000, and how many of those would you say are, are people who are born in Ogasawara, and how many have come here from mainland since they were born? Probably 90% came. 90% came? Yeah, 10% yeah. Uh, maybe uh, have something to do with, with the island. And, and so that leads me to, I think, my most important question, which is, do you feel Ogasawaran? Or do you feel American? Where is, is your identity lie? Right now, to tell you the truth, uh, go, going back 23 years ago, when I was like, just turned 41 years of age, and I was living in San Diego, doing engineering work in high tech, and I realized that if I'm if I'm gonna die, which I eventually will, some sooner or later, that I'm gonna die. I want to be buried on this island. So even when I was living and working in the states, I felt that way. So a few years after that, I found myself back on the island, and now 23 years later. I'm glad I made that move. Even though I'm an American citizen on a much broader scale, but on a small scale, which is what we all, maybe I, I have that option, you know, because I'm free to do what I please as an American citizen. I can live anywhere I want, actually, yeah. <laughs> and still be an American, you know? Mm -hmm. And what does it take to be Ogasawaran in your mind? It, with all these newly, 90% newly incoming Japanese citizens to Ogasawara, is being Ogasawaran a feeling? Is it an ancestry? What makes you from here? Well, I believe it's the ancestry that really counts. Mm -hmm. Because Japanese people do respect that, that you know, just that that I have an ancestry beginning and a start on this island, especially being born, because right now, like my son, he was perceived conceived on this island, but since there are no decent hospital to give birth to him, my wife had to go to the mainland to a real high-tech hospital to give birth to him but but he is was not born on this island he was born on the mainland and any new babies that are being born or conceived on this island when they get born they have to go to the mainland so it's impossible to be born here now right so you must rely on something else to say you're from here because you couldn't have been born here now. You have to be, like your son, is Ogasawaran, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in, I estimate, but he was born in the mainland. Right. But because he feels and has the ancestry yeah, from so, here. So, so, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it all goes down to, to the ancestry, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and, and the Japanese, the newcomers, they, they respect that. They respect that. And how do you see that changing over the next generation, your son's generation, his 
children's generation? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea how that's going to change. <laughs> Japanese are very, you know, they stick with uh, his history, except for the war history. They kind of swap it upside down, but other than that, they pretty much keep it honest, I believe. That's really nice to hear. Thank you. Your ancestry is the ancestry of Ogasawara in a certain respect. It's true.